Hello guys, welcome to Fellow TV Kenya today. We are, uh, we are privileged to have one of our specialist oncologists, in, uh, one from MTRA. Just as we, have, as, as we, we said the other time that we will have shows uh, that will be uh, running in our Fero Media Service channel that is uh, Fero TV Afia and uh, we will be dealing with cancer because cancer most of the people have been complaining have been suffering through this uh, kind of disease and uh, today we want to know what are some of the things that as our esteemed audience that you should do and uh, what are some of the things that you should get to know about cancer and uh, cancer related diseases so that you can uh, be able to uh, deal with them or if you, are, you have been affected in one way or another, you will also know some ways to cope with the disease. Now, welcome to uh, our Fero TV channel. And uh, here to, with me, I have a co-host. Uh, just uh, do some introduction so that we can invite our guest. Uh, welcome so much. My name is Mr. Collins, uh, representing Fero Media Services. Thank you. Welcome. Now back to you, um, I want to now launch officially the program of today that is Ferro TV Afia and uh, just as you have said, we have an oncologist, I want to welcome her so that she can uh, do some brief introduction. Uh, welcome, uh, this is Ferro TV Kenya and uh, we are privileged to have you in your office. Thank you. Okay, now uh, can you briefly have a moment and uh, just introduce yourself to our audience. My name is Dr. Auma Obuya. I am a practicing clinical oncologist at MTRH LDH. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Thank you, and uh, thank you for the introduction. Now, uh, shortly after introduction, uh, kindly, uh, I want to allow you to give us uh, a brief introduction about uh, maybe there are some of our listeners, those some of our followers who don't know what cancer is. You know there are some who have no idea about cancer and it briefly give us information on um, cancer and the latest advancement in treatment of cervical cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer and other related diseases. Okay, so cancer is a disease eh? and it is a chronic disease that is uh, mainly uh, happens because of what we call mutations. And what, when I say mutations, I mean that all of us have things called DNA that is arranged so well in a very precise manner. So just alteration in a protein or an, in an amino acid eh, can send the signal to what we call the cell cycle so that the cell cycle continues perpetually. When the cell cycle continues perpetually, the cells reproduce and then they grow. That is called cancer. Now that growth can be what we call benign. Benign means it's harmless, they are multiplied, they, they are not rogue, you know? They are just there. So you, you see a swelling or something like that. But now cancer is when now that growth is chaotic. It's chaotic, it's unruly, and it spreads very fast. So you find that it could leave an organ of origin and go to the next organ like that, like that, like that, until eventually you come down with multi-organ failure and eventually that is what it is. Yeah. 
Uh, so you talked about uh, cancer being a chronic disease, yeah? So what are the most common symptoms when it comes to the to cancer and the risk factors associated with cervical cancer, breast cancer and uh, prostate cancer? Well, uh, you cannot say there's a symptom that is uh, associated with cancer because there are many cancers. We have lots and lots of cancers depending on tissues of origin. Yes. For example, if you talk about breast cancer, yes. there is uh, a famous mutation called BRCA1 and BRCA2. Individuals that have that running in their genes have almost a 20 to 30 percent chance of developing cancer in their life time. Okay? Yes. And we also find women who have not breastfed for one reason or another, they have not given birth, women who are obese, uh, exposure to radiation. If at an earlier age you were exposed to one form of radiation or another, chest wall radiation, you have a predisposition towards getting breast cancer. When you go to prostate cancer, it's also heavily genetic. You have genetic aberrations that interfere with the DNA formation and propagation. And when that interference happens, the prostate cells eh, are perpetually instructed to multiply. That is how you get prostate cancer. But other things are associated like obesity, sedentary lifestyle, uh, heavy consumption of uh, red meat, popularly known in the country as, as Nyamachoma. That black thing around the, the, the red meat is not good for you. And then when you come to cervical cancer, cancer of the cervix, the cervix is the mouth of the uterus. The uterus is, the, is what is known in common terms as the womb, where fertilization takes place and the baby grows. So you have its mouth, and that mouth is called cervix. And it can also have a, a crazy growth of cells around there, uh, resulting into cancer. The commonest cause of cervical cancer is viral in nature. It arises from a virus called the human papilloma virus, HPV. With a very high prevalence in this country, and that's why you that's how the service is one of our top killers of women in the country and actually in, the, in most of the developed, uh, developed uh, uh, countries. So that is the reason why even there is a very heavy campaign of vaccination against HPV. In fact, there are some nations in this world that have completely eradicated HPV and they hardly see any survival cancer. One of them is Australia because of that campaign of uh, human papilloma uh, virus vaccination. So, uh, the interesting thing with this virus is that even uh, condoms will not protect you from getting human papilloma virus. So the more types you get, the higher the risk that you develop cancer of the, of the cervix. Now, generally, there are things that are universal that will give you cancer of whatever it is. Eh? One of them I had mentioned earlier there is radiation. Eh? Yes. Radiation either from ultraviolet rays, from very strong sun, you will get something called melanoma. Radiation from medical equipment, you know, uh, repeated uh, uh, use of CT scanners, uh, X rays, mammograms, all those. Expose, uh, expose you to very high levels of radiation, and these high levels of radiation cause the DNA to break. Once the DNA has broken, the cells now will start dividing without any order. Yes. yes. Okay. Then we have uh, biological causes. Eh? I have mentioned the, the viruses. Eh? I have just mentioned the human papilloma virus and it's associated with cancer of the virus. Eh? And there's a strain that is associated with cancer of the throat. Eh? And then alcohol, excessive consumption of alcohol is not good for you. Cigarette smoking is not very good for you. Cigarette smoking is associated with almost all cancers, be it cervix, be it throat, be it lung, be it nose, cigarette smoking is not good because the cigarette as a, as a substance has several elements, so to say, that are carcinogenic. 
carcinogenic nick means that they predispose to cells towards aberrations in their DNA and therefore encouraging their multiplication without without any order. And then uh, sedentary lifestyle, people become obe obese. We never used to have this problem before, but now Kenyans are becoming very obese. They are not they are eating, they are overeating and they are not exercising well. So they have a high body mass index and that alone will predispose, predispose you to cancer of the colon, cancer of the rectum, cancer of the breast, cancer of what we call a patobiliary system, you know, things like collagenocarcinoma, which is cancer of the gallbladder, cancer of the, of the pancreas. Eh? And then they are just individuals who are unlucky. They have inherited the genes that are unstable from their parents. We call this cancer syndromes. That's why you see small tiny children getting cancer, things like the retinoblastoma. We have actually a gene that is associated with, with retinoblastoma, which is cancer of the eyes. So and so on and so forth. It is a long list. Eh? So you must have these factors coming together and a body that has failed eh, to regulate that disorderly multiplication of, of cells, then you develop cancer. Mm -hmm. Now once you develop cancer, most of the time these structures are very small, tiny things that cannot be seen, mm -hmm. but with time it multiplies, mm -hmm. it becomes big. Once it has left something called the basement membrane, mm -hmm. it can now leave the organ of origin and spread through the blood mm -hmm. to other organs. Yes. That's why sometimes an individual has cancer of the colon and they are telling you it's gone to the brain, what you call metastatic disease. Eh? And that is why we stage cancers. Eh? Because if we get stage one and two disease, it's a localized thing, we can do local treatment, actually the, a possibility of cure. Once it has spread, it becomes very difficult to manage. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, um, thank you for that uh, response. You have talked about uh, radiations as one of uh, the ways that one can get exposed to these cancer, cancerous diseases. Now, what about uh, young children? Because in one way or another you can find uh, they can be exposed to x-rays, CD scans, uh, maybe for medication uh, purposes. So now that is why we, in medicine we have something called the ALARA principle. Mm -hmm as minimal exposure to radiation rays as possible. If you think a child, for example, has pneumonia, and you are 100% sure that this is a pneumonic process, you don't necessarily need to send the child for a chest x-ray. Always order radiation when you are beyond reasonable doubt that you need the test to confirm your condition or to refute the condition. That way you will give very minimal rays to your clients. Eh? Mm -hmm. But I want to assure the public that all those things are done within scientific confines. Mm -hmm. If you go to the x-ray stations in the, in, in, in the hospitals, you will find some mark which is red, eh? mm -hmm. telling you that there is high exposure to radiation around that area. Mm -hmm. So science has been made such a way that we prevent you from absorbing rays as much as we can. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you've also talked about uh, stage one and stage two being a localized thing and it can be controlled on an early stage. So how do you approach uh, the diagnosis and staging of cervical cancer, uh, breast cancer and prostate cancer? Well, the diagnosis really we say prevention, early detection, diagnosis and possible cure. <laughs> Anytime you have something abnormal going on in your body, go and see a qualified doctor. For example, you'll find women with cancer of the cervix bleeding irregularly for a very long period of time. When at the first instance of bleeding or painful intercourse, they would have seen a doctor, a doctor would have done something called a speculum and taken a sample of the cervical mouth eh, and sent to the lab. There is a way the pathologist in the lab will look at that slide and tell us this one look like early cancer of the cervix and you can go and your doctor can do for you something called colonization or a lip procedure, literally excising that place where there is cancer. But you see women will bleed, they bleed one month, six months, one year, 
two years, they come to us when the cancer has left the cervix, now it is in the abdomen or it is even in the lungs. Breast cancer is very easy to make, the diagnosis, and this one goes to women. Women learn your bodies, eh? touch your breasts. Eh? It may not be 100% accurate, but it is not usual to get a growth in your breast. If you find a growth in your breast, please go and see a doctor so that you can be told if this growth is innocent or it is cancerous. So you look, observe, and if there's a reason, excise. Once you have excised, take to the lab, the pathologist will, will tell you what you have excised is this, and then come back and treat the patient. I would like to repeat that once Cancer has gone to stage 3, 4, it becomes very difficult to manage, it becomes very difficult to control and very expensive too. And the mortality is high. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, um, Moi Teaching and Viral Hospital, especially your wing, Chandaria, uh, most people prefer, maybe across the Rift Valley, I think this is the largest cancer center. Now, um, how can you uh, help those who are undergoing treatment uh, in following the procedures, yes, uh, seeking for medication? Because others maybe may they think as uh, maybe their culture, you know, what, what, what do you approach in uh, what do you tell people so that they can avoid cultures? Because other people depend, even the religion, they can say there is no treatment for cancer. When you once you have uh, you are sick, come we pray for you because those are the challenges that people are going uh, are going uh, back in our reserves in our areas of places. And number two, another question that I will like you to uh, state it, uh, clearly is: Does breast cancer affect uh, only ladies, or it also affect men? In this case, okay. Chandaria Cancer Center at MTRH is one of the best cancer outfits, not only in this country, but in sub saharan Why am I saying so is because we have the latest radiotherapy machines, state of the art. We don't have only one, we have two of them, functional. We have a functional uh, brachytherapy machine, state of the art. In fact, we do not have a waiting time at our brachytherapy unit. Eh? And what I mean with that is that if you came today with cancer services, eh? most likely if you meet all the conditions, you will be in our machine tomorrow morning for brachytherapy. For external beam radiotherapy, our waiting time now is six weeks, which is very impressive given that this is a public institution serving very many needy Kenyans. I always say, once they tell you that you have cancer and it has been confirmed, we don't stop you from praying. Pray as much as you can. You can even fast. But please follow the instructions that we give you. Because you will pray, you will go to the herbalist. While you are doing that, the cancer is coming from stage 1 to, to stage 4. So eventually when you come back, when your tumor burden is very high in stage 4 disease, Unfortunately, there is nothing much we could do at that, po uh, at that moment uh, apart from support. Eh? But the system here is quite direct, very clear. The navigation is clear. When you come in here, there's a registration center. From registration, you go to the triage unit. Once you're in the triage unit, you are located your doctor, your appropriate doctor for that day. This unit works from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. It is an ambulatory unit. Ambulatory means uh, we see walk-in patients eh? Monday to Friday so at any one given day if you are booked the doctor will see you so people should not shy away and there's also the notion that when you touch cancer or when you cut then the, the patient is going to die I would like to post a question back to the public if you don't touch your cancer and you don't treat it don't you think you are still going to die but if we Cut your cancer, we take you the lab, we have a diagnosis, we will intervene. So it is better to take this other option. We are not take, we are not stopping people from praying, we are not stopping them from seeing other lists if that is what they prefer. Although me as a scientist I will tell you you are wasting your time with the other list. Come and get specialized treatment here. What was the other question? The question number two? 
the question was um, does uh, breast cancer, prostate cancer and uh, other uh, cervical cancer affect only uh, gender, one gender that is in this? No, prostate cancer only affects men <laughs> because only men have a uh, prostate gland. Eh? <laughs> Cervical cancer only affects women because only women have cervix anatomically. Yes. Breast cancer can be found in men also. In fact, for every nine breast cancers, one is a man. Sure. Yes. Okay. Mm. So, what are the potential side effects uh, and long effects of uh, different treatment options for cervical cancer, breast cancer, and uh, prostate cancer? So, there are those things you call uh, side effects, the public will call them side effects, we call them adverse events. Eh? Adverse events is in that there are uncomfortable things that you must experience as you undergo treatment. Now there are those that you call acute, there are others that you call intermediate, then there are others that you call long term. Depending on if you are receiving chemotherapy or radiation therapy, the commonest effect that cuts across the board, whether you are receiving radiation or chemo, is that your Y cell count can go low, your red cell count can go low, your HB can go low, and from time to time we can request you to bring people to donate blood so that you are transfused. Eh? Sometimes people develop sores in the mouth, terrible sores in the mouth, eh? we call that mucositis, and that, is, that cuts across all. Eh? People can vomit, people can have diarrhea, people can have hair changes, your hair may fall off, you have nail changes, you can get nail dis discoloration, you can have your palms becoming discolored, most likely becoming dark. Now, long term uh, uh, complications are things like fistulas, fibrosis. Fistula is a communication between one surface or another. For example, you know, you have uh, cancer of the cervix, then now you get communication between the bladder, which is the store for urine and the vagina. So you have urine leaking through your vagina throughout. Eh? Or you have a communication between the rectum where the stool is kept and your vagina. So you have stool leaking in your vagina throughout. Those are long-term uh, effects of, of treatment. Now people hardly talk about the emotional, sexual and uh, psychological long-term effects of cancer. Cancer as a disease comes with a heavy burden. Economically, people lose sources of income. Families actually break down. We've seen men bringing their wives here for treatment of cancer of the cervix and we never see them again. Because you see now the cervix is sick, the, their sexual needs cannot be met, and yet this woman is taking so much family money for treatment. Eh? And then just the thought that you have a terminal condition lingering at the back of your mind, people are afraid, even when they have in full remission, they are still afraid that they are going to die. So those are emotional and long-term psychological effects of cancer and cancer treatment. I'm not going to talk about the economic impact because it is huge. Yes. From diagnosis to treatment, it is huge. This is the only condition, you know, where you are walking into the hospital, you are okay, the next moment you are being told you have cervical cancer, stage 3 b we need to radiate you in this public hospital. If you don't have an NHIF, your treatment is going to cost almost 120000 That's not common money for any common Kenyan. Yes. So the economical in impact is, is quite huge. Yes. So you talked about the, the fistula, maybe the leaking of stool through the, the vagina. So when we talk about men, does it affect men when you talk about the the urine, the urine leaking through men non-stop? Does it also affect The urine leaking through men non-stop from uh, cancer of the prostate may not necessarily arise from a fistula. And oh yes, people, men can develop a fistula. I remember I told you fistula is a communication between two surfaces, two to be precise, two epithelial surfaces. So for example, somebody could be having esophageal cancer and it has eroded so there's a communication with the airway. Uh, we call that tracheostasia, esophageal fistula. So it can happen in either sex, not necessarily a man or a woman. It depends on where in the body the cancer is and which surfaces are formed of a fistula. Okay. Now, um, taking you back a little, you have talked about uh, three, uh, four stages. That is stage one, two, 
and stage three. Now, uh, how do you normally do uh, treatment on each and every stage? Because maybe some of our followers have uh, developed cancer and they have been tested. They know their stages and uh, they will wish to know how to undergo treatment on these uh, stages. Well, there is no one blanket treatment stage-wise. Each and every cancer as a way of treatment, eh? mm -hmm. and I'm going to summarize treatment eh? mm -hmm. as chemotherapy, mm -hmm. radiotherapy, mm -hmm. surgery, mm -hmm. or multimodality. Okay. Multimodality means a certain type of cancer may a patient may undergo surgery, mm -hmm. and then after surgery they go some undergo something called neo uh, they go undergo something called adjuvant radiotherapy, and then continue with the chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. that's multimodal treatment. It depends on the disease biology rather than the stage. Yes, but most stage one and two cancers are local diseases can be treated by surgery or radiation, depending on the, the cancer. Most stage three or four diseases are uh, spread diseases, and we do something called systemic treatment by chemotherapy, targeted therapy. Yes. Right. On the same. Uh, in some point, you find uh, maybe uh, when we when we narrow it down to breast cancer, you find most ladies between age 18 and uh, not 18 but 18 and below, they were given some vaccination in Kenya. Now, what has that vaccination helped in as the life pro progress? What kind of vaccination? Uh, like you say, jump, uh, the. Kenya, the, the Ministry of Health is championing for, uh, I think, human papillomia. Uh, human papilloma virus is, yeah. the, is, the, the, is the vaccine that we give against the human papilloma virus to prevent development of cancer of the cervix. Okay. Now, we will only give you this eh, if you have not been exposed. And exposure means you do not have any sexual debug. Whether you are a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. After that, your chances of getting human papilloma virus at the first sexual intercourse is almost 70%. Okay. So it doesn't make sense eh, to vaccinate guys who have been having sex throughout. Eh? For these guys, we talk about screening okay. and early detection. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, does each affect, age and relationship affect the uh, the probability of getting cancer. The older you get, the more genetic aberrations you have, mm -hmm. and the more uh, your 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 DNA support system is relaxed, mm -hmm. and the the more uh, chances that you are going to develop cancer. Okay. Yeah. So there is someone outside there that is having maybe cancer due, uh, at the process of treatment stage one, stage two, and someone has read that stage three and four. How do you uh, maybe involve patients in the decision-making process regarding their treatment? So, once we suspect that you're having cancer, we say malignancy mm -hmm. in the medical cycle, mm -hmm. we prepare you, we tell you, this swelling in your body looks like it can be cancerous. Mm -hmm. We are going to take a sample to the lab. Mm -hmm. When the sample comes back, mm -hmm. there is something called disclosure. Mm -hmm. The doctor will tell you, like we were suspecting, it has been confirmed that you have cancer. cancer. Then the psychological counselor, who is better equipped with mm -hmm. managing emotions mm -hmm. and further explanations, will come to, you, to explain to you in details and reassure you. Mm -hmm. And then they will send you back to your doctor, who will tell you, you have cancer of the cervix, mm -hmm. to be which is a potentially curable condition. Mm -hmm. This is how we are going to go about your treatment. Mm -hmm. We are going to give you external beam, mm -hmm. radiotherapy, mm -hmm. with weekly mm -hmm. chemotherapy, mm -hmm. and thereafter brachytherapy. Mm -hmm. That treatment is outlined very well, mm -hmm. so that as you go home, you know what to expect. In terms of resources, mm -hmm. in terms of time, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the requirements. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So it is, that's why I said cancer treatment is multi-speciality, multi-modality. We work closely with the nutritionists, uh, counselors, 
we work closely with chaplains, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, and there are things called support groups. You know, if you have cervix cancer, we put in a support, a support group of people who have cervical cancer so that you can exchange experiences eh, and ideas. Eh. So it is a long thing. That's why I say it's a chronic thing. It's not a one touch thing. Yes. In fact, we get so involved with our patients, we feel like part of that family. Yes. So do we have such cases, maybe someone after being tested, he has been diagnosed with cancer too big, like you've mentioned. Do we have such cases like someone maybe uh, denies himself, maybe he denies even the results from the doctor? Sure. Denial is part of the grieving process. It almost automatically happens. No one wants to accept that a bad thing is going to happen to them. So part of the brain protecting an individual is block that and say, I don't have it. Yes. So it's part of the grief process. That's why the counselor is there. Some people grieve shortly and move on. Some people grieve forever. And you have to accept that. People are different. Yes. So denial is part of the thing. And it's actually what fuels going to the herbal way, going to the prayer way. Yes. So eventually when they come back, they are now used to their situation and they are ready to receive help. Yeah. All right. Now, um, thank you for that response also. Now, uh, following the, the interview, there is this question that uh, one of our followers may be asking himself. Can you provide information on any support services that resources are available for patients and their families coping with cervical cancer, breast cancer, and prostate cancer? I have talked about the support groups. Okay. In our institutions, we have them. Mm -hmm. Yes. There are channels that channel individuals to different support groups, and uh, from time to time, we have uh, we have uh, incidences where survivors meet for support, exchanging experiences, and it usually is a very beautiful meeting to be at. Yes. So you organize as a so we have channels. We have we definitely have support support groups, breast, cervix. Yes. Thank you. So maybe uh, how do you approach managing pain and addressing the quality of life concerns for uh, patients with uh, cancer? Prostate well, cancer and we cancer. Manage, you know pain, people normally talk about pain, yes? but in cancer we have different types of pain. There is emotional pain, physical pain, even financial pain. You just be going around your business as usual, then they tell you, you have brain tumor. You, want, you have to undergo surgery. Your surgery will cost 300,000. And once you come from surgery, you need to be done for radiation. Your radiation will cost about 200 and something thousand. Money that you are not prepared about. So sometimes an individual is in pain, people thinking it is physical pain, but it is deep financial pain. Then there's the psychological pain of people fearing I'm going to die, leaving my family, things like that. That is a completely different kind of pain. Eh? psychological pain, managed in a psychological manner. Then there is the physical pain. We have different pain scales. Eh? For example, you can say 0 to 10. 0 being no pain, 10 being a lot of pain. And they are managed in a staircase manner. If you have zero pain, people just observe you and reassure you. If you have like 5 out of 10 pain, simple painkillers that you can even buy over the counter can assist you. Beyond that, we now give you things called opioid, opioid analgesics, morphine, you know, yes. So treating cancer is expensive. So, Very expensive. So does NHIF cover treatment? Yes. Up to this moment, NHIF pays for most of cancer treatment in public hospitals. Yes. Okay. Now, um, we have been having cases whereby patients are being uh, recommended to call for medication maybe abroad in countries like India and other places. What are some, why, uh, what are some of the, uh, sig uh, the significance of them going there and what do you normally use to uh, see that we cannot manage this cancer at this level? Actually in this country, <laughs> on 20th of March 2024, <laughs> There is no cancer that is being managed in India that cannot be managed in Kenya. Yes. We have the expertise, 23 a few. 
we have the equipment, so you will hardly find us as qualified oncologists sending patients abroad. However, patients sometimes feel they need to seek second opinion abroad. It's okay. So it's their decision that they, most, they are not satisfied almost, with your research? Almost up to 90% of those patients, it is their decision. Okay. I would like to go and get treatment abroad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's not uh, it's not that yeah. the country is not able to manage no, the no, cancer. No, no. It is their own decision. Apart from few things like bone marrow transplantation, yes, yes. Motor, we, we manage most of those things. Okay. Comfortably without straining. Mm. Yes. So how do you stay uh, up to date on the latest research and guidelines for treating uh, cancer? Well, as a doctor, they say the day you stop reading is the day you start dying. Yeah, we always read, we go for, we do research, we go for conferences, to gain new knowledge from colleagues, yes. So, um, thank you for those responses. Now, as we approach the conclusion, uh, what can you tell our viewers on how to manage these cancers, how to go about it, uh, resources and uh, the rest, uh, that may be thinking like, after you have been diagnosed of cancer, you are, da you are dead. What the viewer should know <laughs> is that the best way to manage cancer is to prevent it. Mm -hmm. Remove yourself from situations that can predispose you to developing mm -hmm. cancer. Yes. And once you have got the diagnosis of cancer, mm -hmm. don't too, spend too much time grieving. Mm -hmm. Accept treatment and follow the doctor's instructions to the letter. Mm -hmm. If you are not satisfied with your doctor, go seek second or even a third or a fourth opinion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And cancer, as much as some of them are terminal, now we say cancer is a chronic disease, mm -hmm. manageable just like diabetes, mm -hmm. hypertension. In fact, when you go to our clinic, there the line is very long. Some of those patients we've been treating them for the last 5, 7, 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Maybe apart from biological genetics, does uh, hygiene and uh, maybe balanced diet affect of course cancer? We are talked about that. Red okay. meat is bad. Okay. Too much of everything is bad. Sugars, fine sugars. <laughs> not good for you. You know, ice cream, sweets, chocolates, <laughs> carbonated drink. <laughs> not good for you. Okay. Always try to do everything in moderation. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Maybe you can have something before you conclude. Uh, maybe your parting shot as uh, we conclude. Parting shot is that listen to your body. <laughs> Never ignore any symptom, however mundane it is. <laughs> a very tiny black spot at the sole of your foot eh, <laughs> can be the beginning of a nightmare called malignant melanoma. It will not be painful. It will just be a black spot there, seated, relaxing. The next day, you are not breathing. We do a chest x-ray, we have what we call cannonballs. Eh? The melanoma spread from the feet to the lungs. Listen to your body, look at your body, and never ever ignore any small symptom. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Thank you, thank you. It has been a good uh, time to have you in our interview today. And uh, we are looking forward to having you once uh, any other time that we will seek. Maybe our audience may be following us and they will seek for more and more uh, interviews of the same. So I, I know that one day, one time, we will reach out to you again so that we can have you again in our interview. And uh, thank you for your time, all our viewers, whenever you are. Continue following our channel, Ferro TV Kenya. I want to also to accredit our technical team, that is Wanguchi, who has been our uh, potential camera uh, operator. And um, uh, Edmond, Edmond, our camera, uh, camera person also. And uh, our doctor here, that is an oncologist. Also, encourage your students to go to higher education, join tertiary institutions to pursue medical courses so that we can have more like our madam here who has an enriched us with uh, skills, enriched us with information concerning cancer. So thank you for your time. Have a blessed time. So it has been a learning session. Actually, I myself have really benefited from Dr. here. He has mentioned something that if you see any slight change from your body, 
seek assistance from a nearby hospital for you to be checked up. I've been your host here together with Kigia. My name is Colin Sinito. Thank you. Thank you. Have a pleasant time. Thank you.